had a wonderful week. Um, if you're uh, joining us online, uh, please go to www.salemorange.com to download the lyrics for today's service or to leave an offering um, or just to uh, learn more about Salem. Uh, this last week we had Ash Wednesday and officially began our Lenten season. Pastor and Adam and I were out in the parking lot and we were uh, doing the imposition of ashes and we were just so blessed to catch up with a lot of you um, as we did that. It was just fantastic. Uh, as our first Sunday in this season of Lent, uh, let us turn our hearts now uh, to God and prepare. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray together. Oh God, Heavenly Father, look upon us and hear our prayers during this holy season of Lent. By the good works you inspire, help us to discipline our bodies and be renewed in spirit. Without you, we can do nothing. But by your spirit, help us to do right, to follow your commandments. Teach us to find new life through penance and keep us from sin. God of love, bring us back to you. Send your spirit to make us strong in faith and active in good works. Open our hearts and prepare us for the feast of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, during this Lenten season, nourish us with your word and make us unified in love and in prayer. Keep us faithful to the gospel and give us grace to rise above our human weaknesses. Father, we reach out with joy to grasp your hand. Please steady us. Please steady us and guide us in your gentle mercies. If we're left to ourselves, we can do nothing again. Father of love, source of all blessings, help us to come closer, closer to your throne this morning and prepare us One God, now and forever. Amen. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Open the eyes of my heart.
Amen. Uh, normally, yes, give it up for the Lord. Uh, normally, we would go across the aisles and uh, have our, our meet and greet right now. If you're at home, uh, pl- please feel free. If you're with your family, give them um, some hugs. Share God's peace with them, please. And if you're here with us today, just wave to your neighbor. Um, maybe blow some, some heavenly kisses <laughs> their way uh, and share God's peace. Again, God's peace be with you all. I have just a few quick announcements. Uh, my name is Zach, again, and I am uh, the Director of Worship Arts here at Salem, and uh, it's so great to be with you. It's, bo- it's so great to be gathered in his name this morning. Um, Salem is a church who seeks to know Christ by being in relationship with him, so uh, a great way to know Christ is to pray, right? So if you need prayer like we all do, or if you know someone who needs prayer like we all do, please uh, find me, find Pastor, find, find Adam or anyone uh, if you're here today, and let's pray together, please. We'd love to be praying for you. If you're at home, um, you can always email deacons at salemorange.com if you'd like uh, prayer, or if you'd like them to pray over the phone with you. Um, again, please email deacons at salemorange.com. Salem's also a church who seeks to grow in Christ by studying his word. We have Bible studies and small groups happening every week, uh, so please look into signing up for one so we can all grow in Christ together. Um, Contact the church office for more details. I know we have Zoom Bible studies as well. I know there's a new women's Bible study starting in two weeks, I believe. It's going to be on Mondays at 6.30 p.m. It'll be online or Fridays at 9 a.m. in the sanctuary. Um, So, again, for more info, please check on your uh, church app, your church center app, or go to our website. Um, Salem's also a church where we show, we like to show our, our love for Christ by serving him and his people. We have opportunities to serve people in need every week, whether it's helping people in this church and in this congregation and in our community right here, or uh, helping uh, through Charity on Wheels with our homeless ministry, our homeless outreach, getting people off the street and back on the road to self-reliance, or again, like I said, serving here in the church, serving here like all these wonderful people are serving today, this morning, uh, serving on a Sunday. We always need help, so please, if you're feeling moved this morning, please contact the church office or send me an email or Come and grab me and shake me um, if you'd like to get involved. And then last but not least, Salem is a church who exists to follow Jesus' command to go and make disciples. And we do that by reaching out, reaching out into our community. We care deeply about this community and we really want to be a light in the darkness of this world. So let's try to remember that. After we leave this place, let's bring bring that out into the world and share it. Um, And now we're going to go ahead and collect our gifts and our offerings um, you can, uh, again, make an offering through our website at SalemOrange.com. Under resources, there's a page. There's a page there for online giving. Or if you've already automated your tithes, um, you can just relax. And thank you again. Thank you again so much. Uh, we would not be able to exist without your generous tithes and offerings. Thank you again for your generosity to Salem. Um, with this in mind, let's, uh, let's pray. Let's pray over our tithes and our offerings. Please bow your heads. Lord, you have blessed us with such love and goodness. We are, in fact, in awe and wonder at the beauty of your creation all around us. We thank you for the sustenance of air, food, and drink. And we thank you for the incredible blessing of family and friends, especially our our church family with us today, Lord. Uh, Father, we offer these gifts to you with thankful hearts and in joyous praise as we give of our money and, and our resources. We also want to surrender. We want to surrender our whole being to you in worship and adoration. Lord, may this offering extend the work of your kingdom through this church and through other churches as well, Lord, through your community right here in this place and beyond, Lord, into this beautiful world which you've made. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take a moment now just to reflect on all our fantastic blessings. The Lord continues to rain down on his people. Upon the mountain where your love captured me, 
Well, finally I'm free, this I know. Up on the mountain, where you taught my soul to sing. Amazing grace, sweetest thing, this I know. And then the storm rushing in, and here I am again, this I know. Oh, take me up to where I was. When I never wanted more than you You lift me up to feel your touch It wouldn't be that much for you This I know oh, oh, oh. This I know oh, oh, oh. This I know oh, oh, oh. This I know Taught me to dance again, this I know. Up on the mountain, where you took this heart of stone, put life back in these bones, this I know. Ooh. Take me up to where I was, when I never wanted more than you. Lift me up to feel your touch. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you here in worship indoors this morning, unexpectedly. Uh, and for those who are at home, uh, just to let you know, I think uh, last time we moved indoors, there was like four people here indoors. And 
the word is getting out that uh, if we have inclement weather and you want to join us, uh, we are doing service indoors uh, during those times of inclement weather. Otherwise, we're going to stay outdoors, but the wind drove us in. And how windy was it today? Do you know how windy it was? It was so, I totally flubbed that one. I totally did. I just can't tell jokes. How, how does that normally go? It was, it was, it was windy today. Okay, literally, not figuratively, literally, I was outside and my face shield that you saw blew off in the wind and landed in the, the well uh, in, in the water. It was that windy. And then on my walk in today, there were three bicyclists coming up Santiago Canyon, and literally, there was a gust of wind that blew me over, and the third bicyclist ran into the back of a car. No joke. Fortunately, she was okay, uh, but it was that windy. It was like high-profile profile vehicles weaving back and forth, and so uh, we did the smart thing and moved indoors and for those who uh, came and joined us, thank you very much. And those who are at home, uh, continue enjoying but stay safe as the Holy Spirit moves through our time here today. Let's go ahead and begin with the word of, uh, continue with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly, most gracious Father, we thank you so much that you have brought us here. Um, you brought us together as the body of Christ, whether in person or online, or those who are watching later on, viewing us later on, we just... Uh, no, Lord, that your spirit, your word, your message will impact the lives of those who are watching, and we ask your blessings to be upon those and all of us as we continue throughout this day uh, and throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God's grace, God's mercy, and God's peace be to you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this. Um, what... How, how many, just think about this, how many different social media platforms do you visit on a regular basis? Just think about that. How many social media platforms do you normally visit on a regular basis? Turn to the person next to you and share with them. All right, so let's, let's find out... Uh, how many were zero? One, <laughs> little Turner. How many were one, two, three, four? I just want to see if you can go back and forth like this. This is great. Fox News. Fox News. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let's shout out a few of things that you can interact with others. That's definitely media. <laughs> what are some things that you go on? Email, how many people do email? Yeah, phone in that. Facebook? Okay, this is great. All of us boomers and older are raising our hands with textbook, or Facebook. How many don't go on Facebook? All right, excellent. Um, YouTube? Yeah. Um, I just totally blanked. Insta thank you, Instagram. Instagram. Okay, there's all kinds of different platforms, and, and uh, most people, the average, uh, most people uh, are about two or three that they will visit on a regular basis. A lot of people are zero. Some people are five, six, seven, eight plus. Others, generally about two or three. Email, YouTube, Instagram. Um, things where you can interact with others. I know a uh, TikTok, TikTok platform that has gone by the wayside. And what's the new one, Adam? Grim Reels? Instagram, Instagram, Instagram Reels. All right. I'm going to stop talking about technology and move into the Word of God because that's not my platform, uh, uh, media. Uh, the Word of God, though, is. And Imagine this, if you had to give up your social media platform, whatever you normally go to on a regular basis, just think about that. What would life be like? And as we go into Lent, and as Zach mentioned this morning, the season of Lent, 
there are things that people have done in years past. They would give up something. They might give up sweets or ice cream. I heard the other day of somebody giving up candy. Maybe somebody gives up a certain type of food or going to a certain type of place or a certain type of activity. I've shared with you before that I gave up coffee on October 17th and I'm going to use that as my Lent give up as well. That is totally cheating, Gina. Absolutely. But imagine if you had to give up something, something that you were addicted to um, in in something that that beyond what I just talked about, that you were truly addicted to and you just couldn't give it up. What it would be like to go through life. How would you respond? And most people, at first, when they give up something, they crave it. And then, usually, because they crave it so much, they start misbehaving, and they they misbehave because they crave it so much. And then, after a while, you adjust, and you accept, and then, After a while, you thrive. And whether it's giving up something that I just mentioned or if it's giving up an addiction that is affecting your life, you know the steps, and and some addictions are even harder to give up. And so today, as we jump into the story about someone who gave up an addiction and took something else on, we're going to see kind of the struggles that they went through as they walk through this. Because we're all addicted to something, but it's just a matter of where we land and what we take a look at. Let me ask you this. What do you think God's addicted to? And some people are probably going, God, addicted? What is God's addiction? Us. Absolutely us. God's addiction is us. God's mission is that he wants us in a relationship with him. And as moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and sons and daughters and children of God, we want to follow along with God's mission. We want to be embracing it and following it and be part of it. But sometimes we say, how do we do that? How do we do God's mission? How do we specifically do that? And sometimes, I don't even know if I can do that to myself, let alone my own roof, let alone my own community or neighborhood. So where do I land? How do I do God's mission? Because God's mission is us. And he says, this is how you do it. Make disciples. Make disciples. Matthew 28, make disciples. But how do we do that? And why is it so important to do that? What are the steps that we go through? Well, today we're going to take a look at a man who gave up one addiction in order to thrive in God's mission. Open up your Bibles if you've got them or your phones to to, uh, Acts chapter 9. Verse 19. Acts chapter 9, verse 19. And we're going to take a look at not only heaven's mission, God's mission, but also the steps can be applied for as we look at our children, our sons and daughters, to be spiritual leaders in our homes for them as well. Because it is wonderful for the body of Christ to talk about discipleship and God's mission. But many of us live in the day-to-day, everyday life, and we are looking after the needs of those under our care. And as spiritual leaders, what does that mean for us? Well, let's take a look at how Saul, now Paul, follows God's mission and goes from one addiction to God's mission. And by the way, his previous addiction was hunting down Jewish people people who became followers of Jesus, the way. He was addicted to that. Let's find out how God changes them and how God changes us as well. Verse 19, part B. 
Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. One of the things that Paul starts doing, and most of us don't always like to talk and preach publicly. I don't know how many of us do like to talk publicly, but most people don't. Most people feel very uncomfortable. And yet Paul knew God had spoken to him. And he'd had this experience. And he said, I'm going to know God more. And I'm going to talk about God. One of the things, dads and moms, that you can do in your homes to your sons or daughters or wives or husbands is talk about Jesus. The things that we talk about are the things that we're going to fall in love with over and over. And the things that we talk about are things that we're going to invest in. How much do you talk about Jesus and God at home? And I'm not just talking about pie in the sky stuff, but are you talking about how God loves you? Are you sharing with the person that's under your roof that God cares for you and wants what's best for you? Because God's addiction is us. And God's mission is is to have more of us know him as Lord and Savior. Do you know God? Do you know what to talk about? For some, it's as simple as Jesus loves me, this I know. That's a great place to land. And for others, you might want to go beyond that. You might want to start taking a look at what else does it mean? How do I read the Bible? How do I come to worship? How do I make sure that I don't give up going to worship? And I thank you for being here today and for those who are at home because that's part of the body of Christ, the family of God is coming together in worship. We don't give that up. And whether you're able to do it on a Sunday morning or throughout the week, coming together, worshiping and growing and knowing God. Verse 21, all those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem? Havoc is a nice word for another H word, double hockey sticks, that we sometimes use. He was creating chaos and havoc. In Jerusalem, among those who call on his name. And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? What do you think the people were going through right then? Think they were going through anger? Think they were going through fear? Think they were going through the unknown? I'm sure that's happening. And for them, Paul was the havoc that was being raised. I'll tell you, nowadays, in our lives, we don't like change. We don't like to be afraid. We don't like to fade away. We don't like loss. And right now, in this COVID time, as we're leaving our 11th month and going into our 12th month of chaos, (laughs) COVID, there are people maybe even yourself, that are wondering, is God really here? Is God really here in the midst of this havoc? Is God really here in the midst of this chaos? Because he's not answering my prayers the way I want him to. He's not taking care of my requests the way I've prayed to him about. Is God really here? I feel like I'm fading away. I feel like I'm stepping away from my faith. I feel as if there's a void that is growing between God and me. That's a real fear. That's a real fear during havoc and chaos. We see death around us. We feel loss around us. We wonder Is my paycheck going to make it through the end of the month? Is my yearning, burning that I feel for God still there? Fear causes us to fade away, to feel that loss, to feel that void. 
But let me tell you, God's right there. God is right there in the midst of it. And you can hear me tell you that week after week after week, but just know that when you fall, and we will fall, God is there to catch you. We're still going to hit our backsides when we fall. Sometimes. But God is there with us through the most difficult times and through the least difficult times. Because God's mission is us. And just like a mom or a dad looking after their toddler or infant or child, there is nothing but love and protection wrapped around that child. And we are the children of God. So no matter what fear or what fading away you might feel, God just doesn't rely on feelings. God is there for you. Verse 22, Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Saul was growing in his faith. Saul was looking into the words of God. He was listening to God. He was praying to God. He was hearing from God and receiving from God. He was pursuing, growing in God. How about you? Are you pursuing that? It's easy to pursue physical activity. We can see a result. It's easy to pursue boxing abilities because we can see the one, one, two. It's easy to go on a diet sometimes because we can see the results. But sometimes we don't always see the results when we are growing in God, we think, but we are. We are constantly adding spiritual muscle as we read God's word, as we grow together, as we pray together, read, study, do devotions in the household. You might fumble and stumble trying to do that. That's okay. I can't go out and run a marathon right away. But I can take that first step towards growing in God's love. Verse 23, after many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. I want you to think about this. Who are people that you would trust? Who are people that you would call your friends? Can you picture their faces? People that would be there for you to lower you over a wall? While we don't have a lot of city walls around us, who would you call in the middle of the night if your truck or car had problems? If it wasn't AAA, who would you call? Who would you call if your pipe burst in the middle of the night and you had to go and stay at somebody's place? Who would you call if your airplane got delayed and you came in later than expected and you needed to ride home. Who would you call to be there as difficulties were happening? Who would you call to cry on their shoulder because of a loss that you just experienced? Who would you call to share the joys of life with? Who would you call if he had to be stuck on an island with someone? Think about those people. And in the body of Christ, we gather together as the church. We are the family of God. We're going to be spending all eternity together. And so, we need to look at one another and say, you're part of my family. You're my brother and sister in Christ. And I'm going to be there as we go over the wall together. Who are the friends that you trust? 
And it could be here at Salem. It could be people that are gathering together at worship, gathering together at school. It might be people as we grow together who are uh, worshiping elsewhere. It might be at a house church. It might be at a street church. It might be at another church. But we're all part of the body of Christ growing together. Friends and family. <laughs> we're part of God's friends and family plan. Be praying for those friends and family. Reach out to them today or this week and just say, hey, I was thinking about you. Thanks for charging forward with me. Let them know that you are caring for them. Verse 26, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. So he was up in Damascus, comes 125 miles down to Jerusalem. But they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. All right, we just talked about your friends. Who's your Barnabas? Who's the one that goes into battle with you? And there might be more than one. But who's your Barnabas? Someone outside of your spouse. Is there someone there that is showing you God's love? And I know Zach just talked about the offerings, that you are keeping Salem moving forward by showing your love, by giving your tithes and offerings and donations, and for that we give you great thanks. But there's also people that uh, give their gifts of time and talents and in emergencies and in day to day are right there, right next to you. And for that, we give you thanks. But who's your Barnabas? Who's helping mentor and coach you and counsel you through your faith? And then the flip side, who are you being a Barnabas to? Who are you helping to grow in their faith in their life so that they can thrive in God's mission. Maybe this week you think of one person. And it might be in your household. It might be your son or daughter, your spouse, that you just need to go to God on your knees and pray. Or it might be someone that's part of your life that you're like, hey, let me come alongside of you and mentor you and guide you. Maybe some of you guys, and I'm talking to guys here because it sounds like we have a lot of women that enjoy getting on Bible studies. But guys, maybe we need to be the spiritual leaders and gather together with two or three other men and say, hey, I need to walk through life together. Will you spot me as I go on this spiritual workout? Will you be with me? Will you be my Barnabas and coach me? Maybe you need to do that with someone who is close to you. By the way, this is not a heavy, guilt-ridden thing. I'm just trying to say, hey, this is how one man walks through God's mission. Take what you can use and use it this week. Pick up one of these points. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He walked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, those who had a Greek background and became Jewish followers or had the Greek background who were Jewish, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea, down along the coast of Jerusalem, of Judah, and sent him off to Tarsus. Sometimes we need to go beyond in order to carry out God's mission. Sometimes we need to go beyond our own comfort level. I know back in the day, back in the 60s and 70s, God's mission as they grew the church, as God grew the church, was wherever there were a bunch of members, that's where a church would be planted. And so if there were a bunch of Lutherans gathered someplace, they'd plop a church right in the middle of them. And it was all tied to membership. And whatever that denomination was, they looked and said, hey, we've got a bunch of people who've moved after the war to wherever they were 
gathering and we're going to put a church there and you're going to be a member. And it was good to be a member of God's country club. Oop, God's church. And then in the 80s and 90s, it was more of a magnet. A magnet. You had a great personality who might be up speaking. You had a lot of programs that were going on, and it was a magnet to try and draw people in. A great concert presentation. And that worked. In the 2000s, it was ministry minded focus. We're going to do all kinds of ministry. And we want you to be a part of it as we go out and impact our community or maybe our campus. We're going to be ministry minded. What's the 2020s going to bring? I think God is calling us after this time of COVID, of isolation and separation, to be able to work with that and to be missional as we go out. And we might be seeing more house churches and street churches and home churches and small gatherings coming together of men and women gathering together in their homes, in their neighborhoods, at restaurants, because God doesn't stay in one place. God moves. God goes. And just like Saul, he says, I want you to go too. We don't have to go to Tarsus. But what's your Tarsus? What's your unknown area? Is it your family? Is it your workplace? Is it a place that you need to explore? Is it your group that gets together and goes on bike rides that you need to start talking about Jesus? Is it the motorcycle guys that you hang out with? Is it the horseback riding folks that you want to be able to share God's beauty and creativity? Be a steward and servant of God's word as you share with them God's mission. What's your Tarsus? This week you can be thinking about that. Who's your Barnabas? Who are you a Barnabas to? And what's your Tarsus? As you know and grow and show and go to carry out God's mission. Verse 31, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. You know, as we walk through God's mission, as we walk through God's focus, his strategic plan, the best thing is we don't have to worry about the outcome. God wins. God rules. God rocks. God loves you so that you can thrive. God's blessings as you take a look at knowing and growing and showing and going in God's abundant life and his love each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God says one of the things you need to be aware of is to be able to have strength as you go on your journey. And part of that strength comes through the forgiveness of sins, the cleansing of the mistakes and the sludge from our lives, but also filling us with his true presence, his body and blood, where he says, I fill you with my grace and my forgiveness. God says to that to us as we come to him during this time of communion. And if you've got your communion packets with you, I invite you at this time to peel back the plastic layer on top and expose this little humble wafer. Because just like us, this little humble wafer doesn't look like much. But when God's word is connected to it, it is the true presence of God. Christ in us and with us. And when Jesus looked at his disciples around the room, and he took bread, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. I invite you to receive the body of Christ. 
and after supper when he had supped, he took the cup. He didn't have a peel back sealed cover. So I invite you to peel back your sealed cover now and take the cup. And when Jesus had taken the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it to them and said, drink of this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. I invite you to receive the blood of Christ. And now, may the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, preserve you, keep you strong and steadfast to life everlasting. Continue to grow and live and thrive in his love and in his forgiveness. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's bright, smiling face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace, always and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I was reminded just listening to Pastor and, and, and comforted today um, as, I, as, I, as I heard him preach. Just came through to me. I, I don't have to be perfect. Um, you know, I, I can make wrong terms. I can turn back. You know, listen, hearing about Saul doing just that gives me a tremendous amount of peace. Gives me a tremendous amount of comfort. And I hope it, I hope it comforts, his, comforts you as well. Yeah.
God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Go out filled with his peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Uh, again, go out filled with his peace. God bless you.